Hello, welcome to another episode of Fossiliferous out on the beach. Now we're up on the Yorkshire coast again today. I'm just coming down the hill. Whoop, a little bit of a rope. So yeah, I'm gonna come and have a look at uh, an area north of Robin Hood's Bay uh, and see if we can find some interesting ammonites. So, uh, get down to the bottom. I've not really done the Yorkshire coast a huge amount over uh, the uh, spring and summer period. So nice change. So yeah, come today to do a nice long stretch. Uh, let's see if we can find some interesting ammonites, hopefully. It is summer, so yeah, fossiling is not always as good, but we'll see what we can find. We found a bit yesterday, uh, which was a nice surprise. We've had a bit of weather at the start of the week, uh, which is always good. So let's see if we can find some good fossils. 6am and I'm already sweating. It's going to be a toasty day today. So, but the sea is really flat calm. So, not a big tide. We'll see what there is. You can never tell. Um, there's a good chance today to pick up something a little bit older than the usual uh, Twash and Fair. So, I'm going to go into the Plains Back In se section, um, which is a good section here, this, uh, this location. So, we're looking for Rhinoceros and Amalfius. Um, with some rarer stuff, but uh, we'll see uh, when we get to that section if there's anything showing. With a friend today, we're coming down there. Okay, so the first bay. There's a nice big lump of uh, Lenian sandstone here, a bit of beach bed. This is where you find the dinosaur footprints, but yeah, I never really look for them to be honest. They're never very well defined. Interesting, but yeah, I never really want to collect one. Doesn't float my boat. <clears throat> yeah. So we've come down. This bit is the uh, in the base of cliff. Oh, the base, the base or the scar, as we like to call it up in Yorkshire. Uh, it's um, jet rock or um, serpentinum zone. Um, these are the higher beds uh, as we go down towards that way we'll be descending and then in the cliff and you can see a lovely bit just up there Whoa. that is the Bifron zone where you get the Daxon Hildes so here Ergentisserus, Harposterus up there Daxon Hildes and as we go in this way it's getting older that's a lovely little bellum night it's the uh, Squid guard. In a, in a bit of a squid. Quite nicely preserved that. Yeah, finding a few little bits. Just saw this uh, bit of an ildi. Yeah, it's popped quite nicely. Not too bad. Should tidy up okay. The other side would probably pop off as well. Cool. Right, just uh, Tapped a bit off this rock, and that is the keel of a Pseudoleoceros. So that will all be in there. Should be quite nice, that hopefully. Like a little pseudo. Right, so spot the duck time. Wee! Aha! Ducky ducky, come on, focus. There we go. That's showing all the keel. It's a Peronoceros, in fact. You can see the little ribs. Yeah, little Peronoceros. Nice. Okay. Oh, it's in this reasonably sized nodule. Now I've cracked it open and there's a little pseudo. Probably got some more bits in there as well. It was probably bigger at one point, but that's the that's the middle, probably the fragma cone. Body chambers on these get crushed quite often, but that's, that's quite a nice one in that rock. Lovely. It's a Pliens back in section now, and uh, there's a lovely keel of a pleuro. Yeah. Pleurosa salmonite in there. I should split it or not, I don't know. Could be good, or it could just be prepped out. Either way, it's quite nice. Might leave it as is actually, someone else might want to prep that. Nice. 
just a reminder I've still got the summer competition going on so uh, in order to participate and win some uh, wonderful Yorkshire Coast fossils uh, you need to purchase a t-shirt from the uh, fossiliferous web shop which is uh, fossiliferous.onlineweb.shop um, go there get yourself a t-shirt one of these nice uh, for uh, summer fossiling uh, once you've done that get some pictures of you wearing it on the beach fossiling doing some activity uh, whatever it is as long as it's not dangerous uh, my kids will uh, judge the winner in September so uh, still plenty of time to enter uh, on your summer holidays and while it's t-shirt weather because then it'll be uh, hoodie weather I think it's about the Ammonite time have you seen it yet? let's see this, this type even if it's not there we go, a little catacolosterous, a bit worn, but it'll have a nice middle. Right. I just saw that bit of keel sticking out, giving it a crack. <laughs> it's glued itself back together, don't want to open. Go on. <laughs> don't want to open. There we go, and a Malpheus Stokesy. A little bit worn, but uh, yeah, nice to see. I think I've been unlucky with this one. I found this nice shelly block, and uh, it's got an Amalfius in it. But unfortunately, all this side has worn away. We could have a nice middle, so it might be worth taking to actually make a smaller one. Just depends how much has gone on this side. We'll see, but yeah. Malpheus Ammonite. So this one wasn't the best preservation, unfortunately. But there was another one on the other side. So I've got that out. Again, it's not quite all there, but it's okay. But that's a beauty. Nice little one with a bivalve. So a few for the bag. So uh, just breaking open some of this shelly stuff from down there. A little Amoraceros. Unfortunately, there is a little crack on the mouth border. But, uh, Hopefully it'll stay in place till I get it home, get some glue on it. That's what I'll find. Oh, that looks a tasty nodule. What could be in here? Ho 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 ho. Nice Androgynoceros. Probably Maculatum, and I reckon there could be more in that because there's obviously been another one there. Lovely jubbly, happy with that. Don't find too many of these. Nice. And if you want to know a little bit more about the area north of Robinhood's Bay, uh, there is a, a really good paper uh, that um, M.K. Howarth uh, published in 2002 um, on the works of Leslie Bairstow. So Leslie Bairstow, uh, pictured here, uh, was a groundbreaking uh, geologist in the 1950s, uh, collected uh, all the way um, around Robinhood's Bay area, which is a, a very interesting geological formation. Um, he mapped bed by bed uh, where all the ammonites were, uh, proper labour of love I think at the time um, and uh, yeah published some, some really good work. So uh, as for today's trip we've been coming from the north and we've gone down to the south. Um, what we've done is we've gone through the subzones. Um, so we started actually beyond here in the uh, Bifrons area um, and then through the Jet Rock uh, Serpentinum zone and then through to the Tenuicastatum zone all of the Tuartian uh, stage or age. We've then gone into the Clientsbachian uh, starting slightly above where this table shows here so we started in the uh, Spinatum zone which is where we find the Chlorosaurus ammonites um, we've then hit the Margaritatus zone um, and uh, had uh, had a Stokesy Ammonite there, uh, which was nice to see, but I can find those. Uh, and a, a couple of Margaritatus Ammonites as well. Um, and then we've gone as far as the Maculatum subzone in the Davoi uh, zone. So that was that Androgynoceros that we found at the end. Uh, all the other subzones are further south. Um, before it starts going back up the Lias again uh, around Winehaven. Um, they all exist somewhere in there, but again, uh, Rob at Robin Hood's Bay is a very difficult location uh, trying to find these ammonites. It's quite, uh, quite a labour of love. 
uh, and lots of trips uh, finding very little so it's always nice to find something uh, in this area because it's usually quite rare uh, but yeah um, check out the works of Leslie Bairstow by MK Howarth uh, it's a really good paper if you want to have more information all right so just about Robin Hood's Bay it's very hot very sweaty but I found a few little bits which is quite nice I'm looking forward to getting that uh, Undergynosaurus maculatum uh, prepped that'll be pretty good um, and a few other little bits and pieces so yeah not a bad day uh, for summer certainly very good so just got to get up the cliff over there not too far away now okay so a roundup of finds from uh, Robin Hood's Bay area so uh, north of Robin Hood's Bay is all uh, Plains Bakian um, but some of the cliffs are Tuarshan so uh, some interesting finds we've got the, the whole lias if we start with the youngest well we got some scrappy dax that one's uh, quite a chunky one so that's probably a Peronoceros subamartum or a Cataclosaurus I'm not sure yet uh, but yeah Peronoceros Peronoceros you can see the spines on the side there and that's another quite distinctive one in there could be a little squish that one and this one is also a Peronoceros because you can see again the, the nodes on the side of the well there, so cool. We've got a few uh, Pseudoleoceros. Uh, there we go, that's one in there. You can see the keel poking out, which should all be in there. Probably split quite quite well that actually. Uh, another little one there, and that turned out quite nice as well. We've probably got a bigger piece of world in there that's broken off. That's quite nice that one actually. It actually stands up by itself. And then, oh, we had a little hildy as well, didn't we? A little bit worn, but a little bit negative. Yeah, most of the world's there. And then, oh, I suppose next on the list will be this semisolatum. So this is a grey shales nodule. Ten, um, Dactylioceros, but it's a tenuic startum, so it's about a couple of million years uh, older than the, uh, the material here. I uh, didn't get any, any jet rock stuff unfortunately, but we did then get some uh, Pliens back in material. So probably the, the next oldest is this Pleuroceros block. It's got a nice uh, medium sized probably Pleuroceros in there, it's not huge, uh, but that'll be nice to preserve I'm pretty sure. There is other stuff in this block as well, um, I think just in the middle there could be another Ammonite imprint. Oh, I've seen another one as well. Yeah, I think there could be some more in this block, but you never know until it's prepped. I've got quite a few Pleuroceros, so I think this one will probably be um, up for trade or sale for anybody who likes to prep their own material. Uh, then we got a um, little Amoraceros. I think it's an Amoraceros. There is a little crack running through it, so it needs stabilizing. Although it probably just is the outer whirl. Um, but uh, it's quite small as it is already, so it doesn't want to be made any smaller. Um, but yeah, a little more of Ceres, a big piece of wood running through this block. It's quite a nice bit of uh, matrix, actually. Uh, but yeah, quite a rare ammonite, although that is quite a small example. And then we got some Amalthius. So this was in the same block as this one. I cracked it open because the Amalthius looked really worn. Um, and it is quite worn, to be fair. But it will hopefully have a middle, that one. Um, so uh, yeah, it's still quite a rare ammonite, so I thought it was worth taking. I don't see Amalfius that often. It has got a middle, could make a nice small one out of it. And that is probably a baby Amalfius of some sort. Probably a Margaritatus, which would be quite nice with that barley valve. Uh, again, I've got quite a few of these, so I may, I may trade this or may not. It's quite a nice one actually. Side for the space route in my collection, and then the one that I will definitely be keeping is this uh, Androgynoceros block, uh, probably Maculatum. You can see there is an imprint there where there's been another one. Uh, I couldn't find the other half of the block, unfortunately. But there's the Androg in this side, and there could be more in. So you look at the size of the block. That, that Androg is going to be about here, so there could easily be more in there. So definitely worth having that prepped out. 
but yeah, quite, a, quite an interesting trip. Not loads of finds, but what finds I did get, uh, very interesting. So yeah, quite enjoyable.